I'm Len May, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Endocana Health. We're an endocannabinoid genomics company, and I have the distinct pleasure of having Dr. Chris Spooner join me, who's a naturopathic specialist, and we're going to discuss this topic and many others. Tune in. Thanks. Does using cannabis cause liver disease? Ah, there's a good one for you. So what we've seen are things like this came out of some of the stuff, like, for example, if you take a look at the medication uh, Epidiolex, um, there was some suggestion when they put out the information about it for doctors on prescribing to make sure that you're monitoring liver enzymes in patients that are using large dosages of that CBD product. Okay. So there was some thought that large doses of cannabis, of CBD in particular, might drive some of this. What we're seeing is, is that um, in many cases, like for example, if we talk about the virus, let's overlay the, the virus in the liver through using something like hepatitis. Well, it turns out that CBD in a situation like that helps calm the inflammation in the liver and prevents the fibrosis in the liver. So there's a benefit in terms of the inflammation control in there. Um, the evidence and what I've looked at is that, okay, is there a dose that where it starts to get problematic? And when we're talking about Epidiolex, we're talking about you know, 100 milligram dosages and starting to take much higher levels with that. And then the other thing that seemed to suggest was that it's with anti-epileptic medications that the combination of those two are hard on the liver as well. So again, take home message here, just trying to simplify it down large dosages of CBD, you probably need to be working with a health professional to take a look at monitoring those liver enzymes. And then the other part of that is, is, you know, what are the other medications that you're, you're on, you know, and, and those what we call pharmacogenomics. And that leads to something like the DNA question that we had earlier, is that, you know, that's one area where DNA is showing up to be very beneficial in helping to identify and target medications that are specific for you. Yeah, it's uh, along those lines. It's uh, I, I'm glad you brought up the drug interaction part of it because that's that was my follow up question. Uh, in terms of, in terms of looking at drug interaction, I, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, it, what's the importance of uh, metabolic function? And does uh, are there certain uh, genetic uh, markers? Are there certain uh, genotypes that are related to uh, metabolic function that you should be aware of when you're consuming? cannabinoids in general and that whole drug interaction and how much of different things because you know in, in epidiolex the way i understand it, it's a pretty concentrated dose you're taking a large amount and does it matter what type of metabolizer an individual is when they're out looking at consuming it so it's not kind of a one size fits all for every single individual yeah, and I think we see this even just with our, our regular medications. Why does one medication work in one person and another one, you know, and, and not in another one? I mean, antidepressants, for example. I mean, this is probably where we're seeing the best application of pharmacogenomics is that some people are slow metabolizers and some people are fast metabolizers. And, and there's the range in between as well, too. So some people might need very small dosages of, uh, or at the lower dosing range versus higher dosages. So that becomes something that's super important. And when you take a look at, you know, sort of this metabolism through the liver, think of this as that you're, you know, these chemicals come into your body, they do their job, and now they need to be escorted out and gotten out of the body because they don't want to hang around forever and ever. And so your liver processes these and, and, and filters them out. Now think about it, okay, well, there's a, a bunch of doorways that they can exit through, you know, and, and you know, thing, many different families of what are called cytochrome, cytochrome P450 enzymes. And so what happens though is that some of these medications, they like to all go through the same door. And so they get kind of blocked up and stoppered or don't get through. Or if you've got one that's going through the door, the other one can't. And that's what happens with the cannabinoids as well, right? Is that they go through some of the pathways that are similar that other medications like antidepressants go through, some of the antibiotics, some of the antifungals and things like that. And so what could end up happening is that while one person's going through the door, the other one backs up in the system so the levels of the medications can start to go higher and that can lead to some problems, you know, and it depends on the medication, you know. 
um, we saw this. I used to practice down in Arizona, and and every you know every year we'd get some people coming in saying I'm really super dizzy, you know I'm really lightheaded, and my first question was was do you have a grapefruit tree in your backyard? And they're like, oh yeah, we come down here. We came down from Minnesota, and now we're eating grapefruit every day, right? And I'm like, and you're on blood pressure medications. Well, it turns out that. Grapefruit, something in grapefruit locks the door, closes the door, so now the blood pressure medications can't get out, and so they build up in your system and they lower your blood pressure, make you dizzy, and so that's something that again we can identify with you know sort of specific genotyping and doing DNA testing on that,、um, and there's lots of things now that are out there, different algorithms and, and、uh, analysis that can help identify those. So yeah. Hey everyone, I hope you found this information super super helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe below, right here, and stay tuned for all the latest and greatest from Endocana and what we have to say about endocannabinoid system and DNA. Because remember, cannabis is personal. Stay healthy, stay well. Thank you.